Hi, my name is Rick Longinotti, and I want to share with you uh, a solution that we could implement very soon in Santa Cruz County for commuters who are stuck in traffic on Highway 1. Uh, it's called Bus on Shoulder, and I'd like to show some slides about that so that you can get an understanding of what we're facing. We've got a choice before us, and I want to explain what that is. Um, Bus on Shoulder has started in uh, Minneapolis and spread to some other cities. Uh, and here's a photo that just says it all. It's a bus on the shoulder of the highway that doesn't have to compete with traffic because it has its own lane. Uh, inspired by this example, uh, Santa Cruz County and Monterey County got some legislation passed through the California legislature to allow bus on shoulder in our counties. They followed up with a feasibility study the study showed on, on this map that consultants found where there was room to, for a bus on the, the right shoulder of the road and the median of the road. The blue marks are the median, the right shoulder is the red marks. Um, the Regional Transportation Commission has a different idea. Um, they want to build auxiliary lanes and that's part of a bigger project and I'll say more about that in a minute, but uh, the, there would not be buses in their own lane with a very, uh, a, small exceptions, small segments uh, at the interchanges. You see on this map here at the interchanges, those orange lines, that's where the buses would have their own lane as they cross the, uh, the interchange. By the way, no other bus on shoulder system in the country runs the buses primarily in auxiliary lanes. In fact, I, I don't think it's accurate to call what the uh, Regional Transportation Commission is proposing is bus on shoulder. It's really should be called bus and auxiliary lanes. Uh, so what's wrong with bus and auxiliary lanes? Well, this photo says it's all. It says it all. It's a, a photo of the existing auxiliary lane where you see the the shoulder of uh, the the uh, auxiliary lane traffic is just as congested as the other lanes. Caltrans EIR uh, found the same thing. They they uh, estimated you know, what the delays would be along the highway uh, for the next proposed auxiliary lane, which is, which would be from SoCal Drive to 41st Avenue. And they say that, uh, that after building that, the congestion would slightly worsen. Caltrans also examined a much bigger stretch of auxiliary lanes all the way from Santa Cruz down past Freedom Boulevard. And they found that even if you do that, plus you add ramp metering, you're not gonna reduce congestion more than slightly. Uh, and aside from that, you're not going to improve safety. The accident rates would be the same from building or not building the project. But it would raise greenhouse gases because you have more uh, pavement, more cars on the highway, more vehicle miles traveled. So you're asking maybe <laughs> if these auxiliary lanes don't relieve really congestion and they don't improve safety, why are they being proposed? And one answer that offered by a commissioner is because well, Measure D called for auxiliary lanes and we've got to respect the voters. Well, to me, respecting the voters would be respecting what the voters intended, which I believe was to get some kind of re congestion relief. When Measure D was voted on, we already had an EIR that said the auxiliary lanes were not going to work, but the voters didn't know that. Nobody told them that. In fact, they were told something different. They were told that uh, these auxiliary lanes would ease congestion on Highway 1. In fact, a mailer went out from uh, the RTC, from the Regional Transportation Commission, paid for by taxpayers, of course, and it went to all voters saying that, you know, raising people's hopes for this project. Another uh, explanation, and I believe this one is accurate, is that uh, auxiliary lanes are a stepping stone to a much larger project, the HOV lane project. And uh, here's the HOV lane project, the artist's depiction of it. It features a carpool lane, a bus lane <clears throat> on the median side of the road. Uh, then you got the two through lanes, and then on the right side, the, an auxiliary lane. So four lanes in each direction. And as we know now, most of uh, Highway 1 along this stretch <clears throat> is two lanes in each direction. So we're doubling the lanes on the highway at great expense because you have to tear down overpasses and rebuild them. So it's very expensive. Um, and the reality is that uh, the congestion relief would be short-lived from this project. As we know from other highway expansion projects around the country, including the Bay Area, uh, we see 
cars filling the road back up again after they've been expanded. Um, Susan Handy, who was charged by the State of California Air Resources Board to study uh, a certain, to, to do a survey of all the of different studies of highway expansion, she found that uh, that the projects failed to alleviate congestion for, for very long, maybe five years, maybe 10 at the most, uh, before uh, the highways fill back up again. We also know that this project is not financially viable. The federal government said that to the RTC some time ago, and the RTC admits it. Um, they had a study come out, they said, well, it's not feasible financially, but after 2035, you know, that's when we are hoping that we'll get this built. But we all know what that means is that, uh, you know, there's no, there's no financial financing this in the foreseeable future. So will we miss the opportunity to have bus only lanes, bus only lanes on Highway 1? I hope not. And our group is fighting to make sure that we have that option. Um, the, the benefit of it would be, we already can kind of tell what kind of benefit would be because we have express buses on Highway 1. And when you ride one of those buses, like if you catch the bus in the morning in Watsonville and you ride it after the morning commute is over, so there's no congestion on the highway, you can get to Cabrillo College in 18 minutes and the county building in 36 minutes. And that's competitive with auto travel. So this could be a real boon to commuters. Um, we can imagine commuters commuting over the hill uh, with the set Highway 17 Express actually starting in Watsonville, picking up passengers in Aptos and then heading over the hill. <clears throat> um, we had uh, the chance to hear Jarrett Walker, who's an internationally renowned transit planner. The RTC invited him to speak about the very contentious debate about the rail corridor. What should go on the rail corridor? Well, uh, Walker gave us a little bit a different perspective about another debate we should be having. He said, the debate before you is not just the exciting debate over what your infrastructure should be. You have a very immediate debate over whether you want to begin providing competitive transit service. And he's implying we, we don't have competitive transit service and, we we, and we're not talking about whether we even want it. <clears throat> so the option for bus on shoulder uh, that has not been considered is a bus only lane instead of auxiliary lanes. And actually the consultants who did this feasibility study, they looked at this uh, they called it an interim, you know, before auxiliary lanes were built. They were told the auxiliary lanes were a done deal and they should examine just, you know, how do you do the bus with the auxiliary lanes being built. But they considered this option before auxiliary lanes would be built for $12 million. You could run an auxiliary uh, a bus only lane from Santa Cruz to Watsonville in the southbound direction, skipping portions where the highway is too narrow. Uh, they did not, the consultants, unfortunately, were not charged with figuring out a price for the northbound direction because they, this was interim. Um, and so we don't have that information. But what we do know is that the auxiliary lanes would be quite a bit more expensive because you need 12 feet for an auxiliary lane, another 10 feet for a shoulder. You've got sound walls that are very expensive. The bus only lane would only be a 12 foot paving required. So that would be much less expensive. I want to leave you with the perspective that our bus ridership has dropped and it's dropped because we've cut back on service um, in large part. It doesn't have to be this way. There are other communities who have done differently over the same time period, roughly uh, Boulder, Colorado has increased its bus ridership by over 250%. And we started in basically the same place, but it took leadership in Boulder to decide that they wanted a bus system that would be of service to a wide variety of people in the community and not just students and poor people. Um, so they did it. Um, as a in closing thought, um, uh, listening to Greta uh, about the urgency of, of the greenhouse gas issue, the bus on shoulder project would not, would, would lower greenhouse gases. Um, and, uh, but it would also have benefits for social equity because Right now, the way our system, our transportation is, system is, there's a very heavy pressure to own a car just to, to, to get anywhere that you need to go. And if we offer people options 
you know, there are households that could get by with one less car, that would be an enormous economic savings for those people. So if you want to help, please uh, go to our website, campaignforsustainabletransportation.org, and give us a donation for the lawsuit that we're doing along with the Sierra Club. We're suing Caltrans to create more options for Highway 1. We're suing on their environmental impact report, which did not even mention bus on shoulder in the hundreds of pages of that report. Bus on shoulder was not even mentioned, nor was, but, uh, nor was the transit on the rail corridor examined or increased transit frequency, which is uh, Jarrett Walker's idea. None of these were examined as alternatives to the project. So we have a very good chance to win this lawsuit. And then that would force the issue for our local leaders to re-examine the wisdom of just paving more highway, which is not gonna do any of us any good. Um, so with that, I will um, say goodbye for now. And I hope to see you signing up for our newsletter and uh, get just get in touch. There's a way to get in touch with us as well to send us your comments. Thank you very much for joining and I'll see you again.